When the 124th U.S. Army Reserve Command was reflagged the 70th RSC in 1996, over 100 years of history on Magnolia Bluff began its final chapter at Fort Lawton, Seattle, Washington. Over 50 units in Washington, Idaho, and Oregon would share the same ground that saw thousands of enlisted live, train, come, and go off to combat. They too would become part of the history of Fort Lawton. During the late 1880s, Seattle was fast becoming the Northwest's hub for commerce and transportation. But even with bustling ports and flourishing railroads, the region was experiencing a period of economic depression that brought Seattle a period of civil unrest. Governor Watson Squire declared martial law, temporarily posting federal troops throughout the city while petitioning the army for a permanent garrison. In response to the turmoil, and supported by the perception that coastal American cities like Seattle were vulnerable to raids by foreign militaries, a permanent military base was planned. Nearby, a new Navy yard in Bremerton increased the strategic value of Puget Sound. The proposed fort would become part of a three-tiered coastal defense network. By 1897, the Seattle Chamber of Commerce presented the Army with over 700 acres on Magnolia Bluff. By the end of 1899, 50 acres of wooded land was cleared. A hospital, an enlisted men's barracks, and a row of officers' quarters were built. The fort was named in honor of General Henry Ware Lawton, a veteran of the Civil War and the Indian Wars, who was killed in action in the Philippines on December 19, 1899. July 26, 1901, the 1st Coastal Artillery Company and the 32nd Coastal Artillery Company arrived, straight from the Philippines where they had participated in the Siege of Manila of 1898. But by May of 1902, both the 32nd and the 106th Companies were sent to Alaska, making way for elements of the 8th and 17th Infantry Regiments, as well as a Signal Corps unit to garrison Fort Lawton. By 1902, fears of raids on coastal cities seemed much more remote, and strategic thinking began to shift from a defensive posture to an offensive one. Two years later, Fort Lawton's second major building phase began, doubling the number of officers' quarters and enlisted barracks. Band barracks were also added. My first uh, recollection of Fort Lawton, I believe I was about seven years old, and my folks took me up to the post for a uh, Fourth of July demonstration. And I recall that there were a lot of horses and they built a temporary bridge as a demonstration and then the bridge collapsed. I remember that vividly and that's all I remember. But about that age, having discovered uh, Fort Lawton, um, I would go up there a short distance from our house and I recall climbing on a cannon that was formerly at the entrance to Fort Lawton, beating it on, on a, with, a, with a rock like young kids will do, and a chip of paint flew up into my eye, and I thought I was surely blind and ran the mile or so home, screaming all the way. And that uh, cannon is now in the courtyard of the uh, 70th Region uh, headquarters. Plans for large gun emplacements, the hoped for coastal artillery never materialized, and construction all but ceased at Fort Lawton between 1908 until 1941. The Army realized its original concept of the fort's purpose was outdated and looked to surplus the property. The city of Seattle showed interest in turning Fort Lawton into a city park. The Army authorized Congressman Warren G. Magnuson to offer the land to the city for the purchase price of just $1. But Seattle Mayor John Doerr turned down the offer because he feared the maintenance costs. During the next 15 years, Fort Lawton became the second busiest point of embarkation on the West Coast as soldiers and equipment headed off to the Pacific Theater during World War II. As, a, as the war went along at Fort uh, Lawton, it was not unusual to see troops marching through our neighborhood. Uh, seeing MPs at the end of the Interbay Bridge, uh, checking cars. Um, I was always a mystery to me of what was going on there, but uh, it was just something that further generated my interest in the military. More than a million troops passed through Fort Lawton as the war intensified. Dozens of new barracks, five mess halls, a theater, a bowling alley, two chapels, a motor pool, warehouses, and new hospital wings were built. 
By the end of the war, Fort Lawton's mess halls could feed more than 12,000 soldiers in a single hour. We had a service club for the enlisted troops where they had uh, game rooms, reading rooms, a library, and provided in in entertainment at various times. We had officers club, we had an enlisted club, NCO club overlooking the water there where the day daybreak uh, Indian Cultural Center is now located. We had family housing all over the place and it was a real nice place because we had a good PX, um, hospital services, we had military police protection, and uh, we had a good life. We, and one of the recreational things, we had a nine-hole golf course located right in this area here by the flagpole, and the ninth hole was at the flagpole. In June of 1950, North Korea invaded South Korea, and Fort Lawton geared up again. Over half the troops that went to and from Korea passed through Fort Lawton. This frantic activity lasted through the mid-50s when many of Fort Lawton's functions were transferred to Fort Lewis. After the Korean War, it uh, pretty much shut down from an active duty point of view. Uh, it provided housing for uh, military senior officers and uh, enlisted, but it was no longer a functioning active duty post. A Nike station was uh, established there, but that was a very small facility and uh, very minor impact. So after the Korean War, uh, it became a full-fledged reserve facility. The active army decided that Fort Lawton didn't really fit their, uh, their needs, and so the Army Reserve was growing in its stature and influence, and the Army Reserve retained a portion of the footprint here at Fort Lawton. Uh, most of the uh, post was declared surplus and given to the city of Seattle and uh, much of what we now know as Discovery Park used to have uh, World War II wooden buildings and uh, military activities on it. Many of the fort's original buildings were demolished. A few were retained, left to be placed on the National Register of Historic Places, though only the exteriors are maintained to their early 1900s appearance. Fort Lawton has supported the active Army and the Army Reserve for over 100 years. Born out of the need to protect the Puget Sound, Fort Lawton is living testimony to the changing needs and transitions of the United States Army. The 124th U.S. Army Reserve Command, or ARCOM, began December 13, 1967. Headquartered at Fort Lawton, it was assigned to the 6th U.S. Army, March 8, 1968. The 124th ARCOM's mission is to provide trained and ready soldiers and units capable of rapid mobilization, ready to fight, win, and redeploy in response to our nation's needs. The Army Reserve itself was formed around the need for medical units. Uh, it was formed in 1908. And uh, the primary reason was that uh, the nation couldn't afford to keep in the active force all of the doctors, nurses, uh, and ancillary skills that they would need in a big war. So they kept uh, a string on individuals through the Army Reserve. And over the years, the Army Reserve, which is the federal component of the non-full-time Army, the Army National Guard being the state component to differentiate, the, uh, the Army Reserve has grown to have a, a variety of units. The organized reserve began to kind of get some legs in the, in the late 50s, and by the mid-60s, uh, units like the 124th Army Reserve Command uh, that was established here at Fort Lawton, I think in 1967, uh, it, was, uh, it was established to give the Army Reserve command and control over its assigned organizations. The, uh Army Reserve at Fort Lawton evolved over this period of time. Um, when uh, I uh, joined, it was a, um, about to become the 10th Corps. The 10th Corps in Korea had been deactivated, and the flag was essentially passed to the uh, active Army organization and reserve organization that uh, represented the Pacific Northwest. I came here as a commission officer and I was assigned to the 10th Corps in this building behind me and 
that the mission of the 10th Corps was to uh, command all the Army Reserve troops and and prepare them for mobilization in, in case of a national emergency or contingencies. Then in about 1968, it was redesignated the 124th Army Reserve Command when things changed again. I started out up on the hill in the old, uh, some of the old buildings and um, stayed there for, for quite a while. The, um, the post was beautiful, of course, um, tremendous parade field, uh, relatively well kept up uh, with respect to the grounds, but the buildings were very tired, very old. In 1968, 7,500 reservists were activated as part of the nation's Vietnam buildup. Of the 45 company detachment size units called to duty, 35 served in Vietnam, including the 737th Transportation Company of Yakima. As the active army withdrew from the post during 1975, the Army Reserve became the last remaining tenant of Fort Lawton. We now have three uh, Army Reserve Centers, uh, the Lisi Army Reserve Center that we're standing in here, which is named for an Army uh, Medal of Honor recipient from the Vietnam War who uh, grew up in the Magnolia area. We have Harvey Hall that's named for another uh, Army Medal of Honor recipient, and then we have uh, one that's not named, it's the uh, Fort Lawton Army Reserve Centers. All of those form the footprint of what we now know as Fort Lawton. I was a member of the first five officers that started at 124th Army Reserve Command, and uh, I'm the only survivor today. All the others have passed on. We had command of troops in Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana. We had uh, about 110 units. At, at its apex, and uh, they included everything from uh, combat units such as the Army Pathfinders, Airborne Rangers. Uh, they were headquartered in Wenatchee, Washington. We had uh, uh, many hospitals um, under the 2nd Hospital Command, a general officer command that reported to me, and we had almost 5,000 medical personnel. We had many engineers, built bridge building. We had uh, uh, organizations that uh, would use uh, deployable pontoons to cross bridges. These were pontoons uh, reverse engineered from what the Russians used. Um, we had uh, law centers, uh, the Law Center in San Francisco and uh, Seattle both had eminent attorneys. From this post, Army Reserve units were mobilized and deployed to support the Gulf War in Kuwait and Saudi Arabia in 1990. Peacekeeping missions to Haiti, Bosnia and Kosovo and more recent mobilizations of Army Reserve units and soldiers to support the global war on terrorism in Iraq and Afghanistan have and are being accomplished with troops from the 124th and the later renamed 70th RRC. Reorganized in 1995, the 124th took up the lineage of the 70th, first as the 70th Regional Support Command, and then later as the 70th Regional Readiness Command. The flag that we were under, the 124th Army Reserve Command, didn't have any, any uh, uh, battlefield service, and so the colors were retired from the 124th and the colors were stood up here in Seattle for the 70th Division, which meant that we put on the trail base blazer patch on our uniform and began to learn the lineage of the, of the trailblazers. More than 5,000 Army Reserve soldiers trained monthly across the three-state area commanded and controlled by the 70th RRC headquarters, providing critical skill units for the total Army in a variety of specialized disciplines. During uh, Desert Shield and uh, Desert Storm, uh, the units that, uh, that deployed from here performed a variety of missions. The 50th General Hospital was uh, the largest medical unit that was called up. It was actually headquartered here in Lisi Center and uh, several hundred, well more than well more than 500 soldiers assigned to that unit uh, wound up going to Saudi Arabia and performing medical care uh, for, uh, as it turned out, far fewer casualties than they were anticipating. But uh, 
Another one of our units, the 315th MP Detachment, a Criminal Investigation Division, or CID, unit provided protective coverage for uh, U.S. leaders in Washington, D.C. Units of the 124th ARCOM and 70th RRC covered a wide range of specialties, including medical, public affairs, engineers, transportation, legal, personnel, and chemical. Many of these soldiers' skills and specialties are well aligned with their civilian occupations, providing additional support to the Army's missions. As the Army has evolved and changed, uh, there have been different requirements for its reserve. We've migrated from what was a strategic reserve when I was uh, first joining it in the, in the 80s, and then as I participated it, uh, in the Army Reserve uh, up into the 90s and the early 2000s, we've migrated from a strategic reserve where the units were organized and the individuals were both individually qualified and trained to work as teams, but those units were organized just in case. Uh, now we've moved to a model where the Army Reserve is a part of the operational Army. And if Collins is assigned to a unit in, uh, in the uh, 70th Regional Readiness Command today, it's predictable that that unit is going to deploy someplace in the world. It'll be in the window for the Army to send it uh, wherever that might be needed. And so the, the, uh, the predictability of deployment has changed, uh, has changed the tempo of activities, it's changed the expectations that both service members and their families, uh, their employers, have to have. On May 13, 2005, Fort Lawton and the 70th RRC were placed on the base realignment and closure list. The 70th flag was furled at Fort Lawton for the last time in late 2007 and sent to its new steward, the 70th Training Division at Fort Knox, Kentucky. The history of the Army Reserve at Fort Lawton will never be forgotten. It will live on in the deeds of individual soldiers and units made up of dedicated soldiers and those who supported them, knowing that their service and sacrifice has made a significant difference in the world. All volunteers, all American soldiers, all Army Reserve. Rolling on. 